Yo, what up, y'all? This is Algy Smith right here. Hey, I'm TJ Wright. What's going on? It's Lamar Johnson. And this is a Radio 1 exclusive. The background of the film um, is based on a best-selling novel written by Angie Thomas. Uh, it's about a young girl named Star Carter who's grown up in the hood, Garden Heights, but she goes to school at a white, uh, like a private school in a white neighborhood, and so she has to constantly put on this code switching things in order to fit in and survive, to be honest. And so she witnesses uh, the death of her best friend, who I play, Khalil Harris. <clears throat> and um, she has to kind of figure out from that moment whether she wants to stand up for him or whether she wants to sit back in fear of, you know, society calling her a snitch. And so she has to find her true identity, speak up for what she doesn't believe in. And, um, you know, it's a story about taking yourself out of your own shoes and looking at life through someone else's shoes. So um, me and Lamar play the Brothers of Star who have to kind of um, help her go through these tough times because we know that um, Khalil was her best friend. So we have to, um, I support a little bit of comic relief. Um, same with him. And yeah, that's basically what we do. Yeah, and we have uh, very similar experiences to her as, as living in the hood and also going to a private school. So, you know, we also have to code switch when we're at home and, and figure out how to navigate in that world. Mm -hmm. Have you guys had to deal with like the code switch part? Just growing up, you guys are young, but have you guys yeah. just going to school and trying to blend in with your black friends versus like, like your mainstream friends? Uh, um, do you mind if I start? Yeah, okay, don't take that. So <laughs> now, like, it's not really that I had to code switch, but it's kind of because I live, um, in Miami, not that I have to code switch, but it's more of I have to tone down my personality a little bit because I go to a private school, same kind of same as um, the Carters. But other than that, um, um, I get to really be who I am, so that's the best part for me. But you know, in order to what he's saying, I feel like I feel like there's sometimes code switching isn't bad. You know, it's like you have to be. You can't be like you with your homies when you got to mm -hmm. be professional, yeah. which is what he's saying. I can't be. You know. Not that you dummy yourself down, but you just know how to act according mm -hmm. in certain places. But I think it's a bad thing when, you, when you're when you code switching to please another person right, or when right, you're doing right. it because you don't want to fully show yourself. Then mm -hmm. I think that's when it's a problem. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's very, like, it's it's a human quality to adapt, you know, uh, to your environment. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes exactly what he said, you know, if it's to please someone else, and that's not really cool, but if it's to, you know, just be professional or for you to act accordingly to, you know, whatever space you're in, I think it's... That's dope. Yeah. Now, another subject you guys are touching on is the pr police brutality subject, you know, uh, all y'all being young black males. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in the era that we're on with the, you know, Kaepernick and, and everything else, where did you guys draw your, your inspiration for your roles and, and how did the actual material hit you when you guys read the script? Uh, yeah, so for my inspiration, I played Khalil Harris, uh, 17 years old. His mother's. You know, strung out on drugs. His grandmother has cancer, which he just found out, and he has to try to take care of his 10-year-old little brother. And so, he's a big music fan, big Tupac fan. Really believes in the thing that Pac, the things that Pac says, and he's uh, he's kind of trapped in this system that Pac talked about a lot. Which you know, being born into this system and having even like no way out of it. And so, uh, he's he's really like a pretty much a heartbeat of this. One of the heartbeats of this story, and um, from his death, you know, stems the the awakening of Star, pretty much. Is there? You, you spoke of Tupac. Yeah, and I know you guys are probably too young to even. Hey man, no man. No? You guys know about Tupac, like. <laughs> hey man, look, yeah. ain't you? <laughs> so it's a two-part question then. What do you know about like as far as that type of that type of hip hop, that type of music, where it's kind of that um active, very activism-driven music? And who would you say is the closest today that kind of resembles? Mm, good question. Who kind of mm. speaks to that today? I would say. Uh, who was close to it today definitely would be like Kendrick. Yeah, I was just gonna say Kendrick. Yeah, I was gonna say or Kendrick. there's a lot more too. I mean, I, oh, I, I like yeah. Logic. Logic there, is dope. There's also a lot of um, underground artists that yeah, you know sure. uh, that uh, speak on like very activist, like you know, music and kind of waking people up, you know. But I think right now mainstream, I think the closest one is is Kendrick Lamar, you know. But I think he does such a great job at at keeping it his sound underground but also he's tapped into the mainstream world so it's like a really cool like marriage that he's made uh yeah i think it's really dope yeah but yeah we know about smith and winston and <laughs> 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 okay yeah. but that's what we want to know so does the music today speak to you and, and if so how so uh, um, okay so definitely um it speaks to me because on um one of the i'm one of the only people in my school that actually listens to new like trending music so yeah. to me it's just a, a fun way to get 
um, inspiration of what I want my life to go through and also it's just diverse all the music today is diverse so it does speak to me but in a way that I can't really explain you know I think in the, in the book and in this movie it's a lot of life lessons I think for, especially for black people mm -hmm. um, so if you could just choose one that you think is most important to you you know to kind of portray from this movie what would it be oh, great question that's a really good question um I think one thing that I'll probably say is just um, using your voice. You know, I think that's a big thing. You know, I think that's also a really big theme of the film uh, is using your voice. And, uh, you know, Star, she has to make a decision, you know, uh, to, to use her voice or to sit back and just kind of watch things unfold. And she made the decision to use her voice and, you know, uh, and find her activism through the injustice. So I think that is also really uh, is something that I probably I'd probably say. Yeah. Go ahead, Go okay. Ahead. So um, I think you should take away an open mind from this film. Um, I think um, what I'm going to take away is an open mind because before um, I was um, in this movie, I was doing commercials, didn't really know much about this stuff. And now I know that um, police br brutality impacts black communities. So mm -hmm. um, I just take away an open mind and an open heart and be proud of my blackness. Straight up. Hell Say yeah. it again. Hell yeah. You probably Hell yeah. what? <laughs> <Rockness>. <laughs> I think uh, one thing for me that I, and I'm going I'm to kind of piggyback off of Lamar, but I think before, uh, what comes before using the voice is just finding your identity. And mm -hmm. then after you find your identity, you find what you want to use your voice for. And so mm -hmm. I think right now, a lot of people just don't know their true identity because they're trying to find it in someone else or, you know, um, supporting someone else or just social media crazy. But I uh, also think <clears throat> it represents, it shows a nice family aspect in this, a, a family, that, a black family that has love, you know, Russell is, the, I mean, Mav is the head of the house still, you know, he, he owns his own shop as a black man, you know, he uh, he's there for his family constantly, and he's still in the home, and so it shows you that structure that that's still possible, it's not just, we don't just, you know, we're not just animals pretty much, right. like, we do have structure, so mm -hmm. that's one thing, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And also just showing like strong black men you know like yeah. especially from mav you know like he comes from a past where you know he might not have made the right decisions but now he's trying to make the right ones for his family you know and i think mm -hmm. that's really important also to have that on screen and for people to experience that 